Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me here. I'm going to provide you with a slightly different story here today. I'm not going to show you any projections for the future. I'm just going to show you what we're doing on the ground, the people who are down on the ground fighting every day for these solutions and the projects we're working on to actually move up these trajectories. So I came to Equinor, or Statoil at the time, Statoil New Energy, 10 years ago. Really uh, had an epiphany. Not 2009, so I didn't read the book from uh, Olaf, but it uh, happened at the same time. Came in after five years as a geoscientist in Schlumberger. That's why I got a really good education that I could take with me to Equinor and use that knowledge to bring CCS forward. And my uh, idea was then to actually save the climate crisis in a couple of years. That didn't happen. Um, what I actually learned in those 10 years is that there are no silver bullets. It's really a large scale problem, lots of issues, lots of parameters that you need to twist. We tested that before launch, but CCS can be one of the solutions. We need to use all the tools in the mitigation toolbox, CCS being one of them. And as a climate mitigation tool, I would compare CCS to a sledgehammer. It's a big, powerful tool that can make a really strong impact on the emissions. I'd also like to quote the UK Committee of Climate Change. They came out with a good report just before the summer. And they uh, were saying that CCS is no longer an option, but it's an absolute necessity to meet the climate uh, emission targets. I'd also like to state that CO2 storage is not a new technology. Mother Nature has stored CO2 for millions of years. Mankind has stored CO2 for 40 years. Started in the UK, or in the US, I mean, and us in Equinor, formerly Statoil, we've been injecting CO2 for 23 years already, starting in 1996 with the Sleipner project. So we have lots of experience, we can show that it works, but we're still not managing to reach the uh, full-scale, really large projects that we need to have. I think uh, Miriam showed in her slide that so far we've injected 200 million tons for the project since the early 70s. Still a tremendous amount, but we need to get further. We need to do more. And I think one of the uh, challenges we have then is, as all have mentioned, we are or have been competing with renewables. And when you compete with renewables, CCS simply hasn't been sexy enough. That's my opinion. I'd like to show you uh, why as well. Uh, let's see here. So you can probably, uh, uh, if you're a politician, if you want to take your photo in front of a CCS project, it's a bit hard, it's hard to grasp, but you can really take your photo in front of a windmill, an impressively white windmill, it's easy to take, or a shiny solar panel, easy as a politician. CCS, it's hard to grasp, hard to take a photo of. But considering that windmill, it actually consists of 80% steel. And then the foundation of that windmill, concrete. And then you're into industrial sources. Steel, cement makes up 10, 15% of the world's emissions. And that's what we need to focus on going forward. Industrial CO2 emissions, that's where we have a thing uh, to do. And which leads me then to the Northern Lights project. Yes. So the Northern Lights project is the transport and storage part of the Norwegian full-scale CCS project. Expecting to do an investment decision next year and starting to inject CO2 in 2023. Initially starting with capturing CO2 from a cement factory and also a household waste incinerator plant in Oslo. The Northern Lights being the transport storage part, Equinor is doing together with Shell and Total. And the beauty of this project is then the flexibility of the transport and storage infrastructure. So we're capturing the CO2 with ships, bringing it up to an onshore facility and then shipping it out in a subsea <coughs> pipeline to a subsea well in the North Sea where we store it. And this is highly flexible. It can be increased in volume. Showing in the map here, we have uh, done a mapping exercise with uh, which facilities can be reached by such a shipping solution. 
And as you see here with these dots, the color coded by the type of industrial emission, size of the dots, uh, depending on the size of the emissions. And what we found out is that you have nearly 350 facilities that can use this infrastructure. Up to 300 million tons of CO2 per year that could be captured. That's a huge potential. And there's also a big push from the Norwegian government that this will not be a one project only or a Norway project only. We need to have more clients coming in other parts of, uh, of the industry, other parts of Europe, need to come in and use this infrastructure. And it seems like we are succeeding. I think uh, a lot of things are happening these days. So I'm actually, for the rest of my presentation, only going to focus on progress that has been made in the last month. So early September, Northern Ice Project had seven MOUs signed with large uh, industrial uh, companies mentioned here. We, we've decided to call them just the Magnificent Seven after this, because these are really forward leading companies, really pushing us to do better. And they want to come in and use the Northern Lights infrastructure and learning to develop more capture, transport the CO2 to the Northern Lights project and store it. You'll probably recognize some of these uh, names here as well. Um, just to mention Heidelberg Group, Heidelberg Cement, the third biggest cement producer in the world. You have uh, ArcelorMittal, it's the world's biggest steel producer. And you have a company like Air Liquid, world's biggest producer of industrial gases, and who also have a really strong focus these days on blue hydrogen. And that's an area where we in Equinor have a shared interest. And we have shared interest with many companies in the blue hydrogen. Mentioned some of them here. This is the partners we are working with to develop real, tangible, sizable projects and to use uh, the existing natural gas network to transport the hydrogen to the customer, either in industry or in residential homes. I think this is a really important change in the narrative for CCS that can really bring us forward. With these uh, big partners to come in and pushing us towards the goal. As for the UK, we've had and still have uh, a few projects in the UK. I could mention the H21 North of England project, could be the world's biggest decarbonisation project. Could also mention the uh, clean gas project that we have with OGCI and Teesside. But those projects didn't happen in the last month. So in the last month, in September, we had a uh, launch of what we call a zero carbon Humber project. Should actually learn today that we shouldn't call it zero carbon, it should be called net zero carbon. Uh, but it's a project that we have together with Drax and National Grid. What it actually uh, contains is a lot of uh, large-scale CO2 storage, bioenergy, CCS, negative emissions, generation of hydrogen that can be supplied to the residential and industrial sector. It's a really, really interesting project that uh, started just a month ago. We also have a lot of work happening in mainland Europe. So uh, the H21 uh, concept was taken to Germany. There we are working together with uh, OGE, Open Grid Europe. That's Europe's biggest gas transmission company. And we're trying to do the same thing, looking at solutions where we can generate blue hydrogen, send it through the existing pipelines and really get down the volumes. I should mention then that last week we uh, had an, uh, um, a press release that we are doing a joint feasibility study with Tussenkop Steel, another really large company. And what we're going to do there is generate hydrogen, send it to the Duisburg uh, steel plant. That's the biggest steel plant in Europe. And then they can produce clean steel that can be used for many different purposes. CO2, they want to send it to the Northern Lights project. So I think you're starting to see how it all starts to fit together. The piece of, of the puzzle forms into a nice unity. 
We can produce clean steel, capture the CO2. That clean steel can again be used to make these fancy, nice windmills and CO2 will be captured. So I think it comes together, makes a really nice solution, a really strong solution that uh, politicians can see that the industry are driving this forward. So just to sum up with the key messages, I'd like to take, uh, you should take with you after this speech. I think the waste business is becoming sexy. We have these bundled solutions. So it's a really, really good, uh, good story we can give. And also CCS being a powerful sledgehammer in the mitigation toolbox. And something that we can use, we have the tools, but we need more people to use those tools. And those people are the younger geoscientists that are sitting in the room here and also in our universities that will go into the uh, new job market and help us use these solutions. So thanks a lot for your time.